We spend significant energy considering human factors in weapon system design. We want operators and maintainers to train quickly, then safely employ and sustain the system with maximum effectiveness. Ironically, we don't apply the same mindset to the design review process itself. We fail to apply human factors to the acquisition process, which is full of people who are short on both time and information richness. It's kind of, uh, kind of crazy how long this is taking to get comments adjudicated on these documents. And so uh, we're sitting in yet another very long meeting and we're just commiserating about why are we doing it the way we're doing it. One of the challenges with designing weapon systems is the complexity. And I found over the years that it's really all about communication. Communicating effectively, bridging between the engineers, the warfighter, the logisticians, communicating requirements, logistical and technical challenges effectively between those parties is quite often the key to delivering those weapon systems on time and within budget. The the benefit of the extended reality design review is that we can discuss technical information with maintainers, warfighters, and designers from across the globe. So we're saving time and money, and not only is it more convenient, but it's actually more engaging to the end user. They can actually see and feel and maintain the system in real space, even though it doesn't exist yet. We can take measurements, make annotations, uh, we can see complex or intricate systems like we've never seen them before, before they're ever even made. Uh, and then you can get feedback from the warfighter or the maintainer in real time. As far as maintenance goes, uh, there's programs designed to help the operators do their maintenance. Uh, virtual realities, even, even instructors, an opportunity, a tool to show them how to do this without actually having the equipment. They can walk operators through these procedures, and so when they actually get on the real equipment, they say, oh, I remember this, and it makes that transition, that process, even better. Presenting a system's operational view, or OV1, in two dimensions is almost laughable today. Everything is connected to everything, and we're all in a competition to fit more lightning bolts into a single static image. The only thing an audience learns from an OV-1 graphic today is that the system is complicated. Stakeholders completely miss key operational design constraints and features, including architecture level interactions and communication, geometry, maneuvers, timing, and sequence. For two or three or four days, we would be killed by PowerPoint presentations that would last forever. And I think the value of those was, was questionable at best. Just imagine, if you, if you will, that you could do that, all of those things virtually. You didn't even have to go to the prime contractor's facility where everybody could be in a virtual environment, where people would be engaged and everybody wouldn't have to sit through the same set of presentations. Imagine if you could do that in a virtual world where senior uh, stakeholders, senior decision makers could see in the virtual world what it is you're doing, what it is you're trying to do, a, a test plan, for example, or here's how the system is being put together, here's the capability that it will have. What a powerful thing that would be that uh, as a PM or as a PEO, you could take that uh, on the road, so to speak, virtually, and you could convince uh, stakeholders and decision makers very quickly about the goodness or perhaps lack thereof of your particular program. While it might be a little further back from, you know, the pointy end of the spear, being able to train and prepare that much better, that much faster with virtual reality technology in that situation would have made a real difference. You could do such things as um, pilot line uh, developments where you could develop the production line in the virtual environment, actually get it to work in the virtual environment before you ever had to lay out any of the floor plans, get any of the capital investment, any of the uh, test equipment or the, the, the facilities, all those expenses. Uh, that'd be a pretty, pretty amazing thing.